video is looking at um, planar kinetics of a rigid body focusing in on impulse and momentum. So from the particle topic you should remember that linear momentum is a body's mass times its velocity so the top equation on the screen as you see it now. What we wouldn't have talked about as much last time is the angular momentum of a body um, so you can see there um, the angular momentum about g, its centre of gravity, um, being its inertia about g times by its angular velocity. Okay, so the new equation is the second one on the screen because obviously our bodies had um, no mass when they were particles. So now they've got a mass, they can rotate. If they can rotate, they can have angular momentum. The angular momentum h is equal to inertia times omega. We might also, um, so thinking about translation, sorry, I'll, I'll cover some of these slides very briefly, um, but if, if things translate, they only have mass times velocity, they only have linear momentum, they don't have angular momentum because they're not rotating. Um, we might, though, want to um, consider that something isn't rotating about its centre of gravity. So we might want to offset it um, to, to be about an actual position. So here you can see the blue shape, the blue cloud on screen is um, being rotated, but not about its centre of gravity. We know that there is a, um, a linear momentum. We can work that out. So we can work out mass times velocity of g because uh, we know that velocity is um, tangential to the, um, the, the direction, of the, the, the curve of the rotation. <coughs> Um, but to work out that the body's angular momentum about point O, we've got a, a new equation there. So the um, effectively converting between um, momentum about G and momentum about O. So where you're not holding it at the point that it's... Um, uh, where it's not rotating about its centre of gravity, there's going to be two things that contribute to the set uh, to, to the angular momentum so the first of those things that's contributing is well as an angular momentum just like we've calculated previously so the bit i've just put in that pink box ig omega that is hg that is the um, the angular momentum about point g the second piece that's contributing this is very similar to some of the practice questions we did around particles, I believe, that were moving about a point. Um, is there's a an MVG, so there is a linear um, momentum that is acting a distance away. Poorly chosen colour there, blue on blue, but um, that is acting a distance away from the point it is rotating about. So that linear momentum also has a turning effect. So again, this is recapping slightly because we never applied it to, the, to all happening on the same one body as it moved. Um, so it's recapping and putting those equations into a new context. Um, so the, the angular momentum about point O is made up of two parts, the inertia times omega, so the, the angular momentum about G, and the um, effect, the, the turning effect that the linear momentum has. So the turning effect the linear momentum has, I've captured in that green box. That's that part of the equation. Okay. Um, and then very, very similar. Um, again, same equations, but just being applied to general plane motion instead of about a fixed point. Um, but they are the same equations. It's just the term is now A instead of O. And the radius has become d instead of r, but the values, the principle, is exactly the same here. So if we try and solve one of these equations, one of these questions, um, the question we have, first question we have, there's two of these. Um, the first question is looking at um, a 300 kilo wheel. It's got a radius of gyration. It's got a radius of gyration because um, wheel with four random holes cut out isn't on the crib sheet. 
that's why we've got that radius of gyration hopefully that's now becoming familiar um, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to draw a diagram and for our diagram or a series of diagrams um, so some trying to capture the impulse and momentum that are happening within the um, within the, 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 the chain of events so in fact no, let me draw the picture first so we know um, it's got a couple moment acting on it so we know that there's starting out with um, some rotation i g omega so there is an impulse to start with So, um, impulse at start. And in there you've got your linear impulse, MVG. And you've got your angular impulse, which I could have drawn slightly more angularly, I guess. Um, IG omega. I should put omega 1 because it's going to speed up. And I should put VG 1 because it's... Well, it could speed up or slow down, but it's going to change. Um, in my... Um, second diagram we're going to have a moment being applied for a time you can um, I'm going to correct my notation in a minute because clearly that is not impulse is it that is momentum that's the momentum at the start so linear momentum angular momentum at the start um, moment being applied for a time is an impulse um, I've got my weight acting for a time, I've got my normal force acting for a time, and I've got my friction force acting for a time. Um, and they're a distance away, and that distance is 0 0.6. Um, and that's going to create some new momentum. So let me put impulse there. That really is the impulses. Um, and the impulse at the end is just going to be very similar to the start, IG omega 2 and MVG 2. So we've drawn our picture, we've got some momentum at the start, some forces and moments are applied, we get a new uh, momentum at the end. And we could think linear, we could think angular. We've been asked for the angular velocity. To find the angular velocity after six seconds, if it starts from rest and there's no slipping. So we're probably going to focus on the angular um, the angular aspect, the, the angular um, momentum and the angular impulse. So we can say for the ang th thinking in terms of angles and angular um Playing from desktop 4. Think, thinking in terms of the angular um, direction. We can say the angular momentum at the start plus the sum between the start and the end of any impulses that are applied, any moments that are applied, tur turning moments, so... So turning impulses, moments applied about A with respect to time is equal to the angular momentum at the end. Why have we said about point A? Because point A in our diagram is our instantaneous centre of zero velocity. So you can see how this all builds together on, on the previous parts that we've done. So angular momentum at the start plus the sum of all the moments that are applied equals angular momentum at the end. We're told it starts from rest. So in terms of starting from rest, we can say, well, that must be zero. No momentum at the start. From our orange diagram, I should have done this in colour coding, so let me do that. Let me do that. 
um, just for clarity. So from our orange diagram, what's causing a turning effect about point A? Well, if we look at our three forces, I label on point A, friction, the normal force and the weight all act straight through point A. There is zero perpendicular distance, so there is zero turning effect about point A. The only thing that contributes a turning effect is our moment, which is being applied for a time, six seconds, which we'll sub in in a moment. No pun intended. Um, at our end, we're going to have some, um, some rotation and some translation here because it's going to be turning and it's going to be moving forwards. So we're going to have M, V, G, R plus I, G, Omega, 2. Okay, so what that's saying is we've got I, G, Omega, 2. So that bit is exactly the same as in our, our green diagram because that's causing an angular momentum. That is an angular momentum. And then the second piece, MVG2, that would be a linear momentum. But because it's a height, a distance away, because G is um, the radius away, it's also got a turning effect. So there is a turning, the, the, the linear component has a turning effect. That's why it's captured within our angular momentum equation. Um, so that's why we're doing mv times r. We can take that a little bit further because we also know that v equals omega r. So we can say in our green equation, or the green part of our equation, we can say, well, that's going to be m. Instead of v, we can say omega r times by r. I know that's going to be r squared, but I've left it as that so you can see this, where, where those two r's have come from. Uh, our inertia about g, well, in our question, we're given a radius of gyration. So I can say, well, that's the same as m k squared omega 2. Um, and I can start to substitute some numbers into this. So I can say, well, uh, my moment is, so in the orange, the moment from the question is 300 newton metres. The time is six seconds, because it's asked as after six seconds. The uh, mass is 300 kilos. Omega is the thing we're looking for. Uh, R times R, well, R is um, 0.6, so 0.6 squared. The mass is 300. The radius of gyration is 0.4. And omega 2 is the thing we're looking for. So there we've got the only thing in our equation we don't know is omega 2. So we can rearrange to say omega 2 is equal to 11.5 radians per second. Now what you may have done, you might have, um, if, you're not, if you'd not spotted this pink bit, to do this pink bit, you might have got from this line, Straight to this line, substituted values in. Seen you cut, you've got your two unknowns, so you can't you you can't find v and omega because you've only got one equation, and then put the um, the v equals omega r in, which is obviously the same thing. But you might not have spotted to do it until a line later, and that's absolutely fine. But eleven point five is your final answer.